had just flown in from California on uh, September 10th, the night before 9-11. Um, and I never spend the night with my girlfriends, but one of my best girlfriends, Erin Dilley, who's also a Broadway actress, had said, will you just come over and spend the night with me? I haven't seen you. And I was a little down during that time. I had done a, a sitcom for NBC that had just gotten canceled. And I thought she would be just the trick to cheer me up. And I spent the night and we woke up to sirens the next day at 72nd and West End and thus began my version of Armageddon. So it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. What was New York like that day? What was your perception? My perception of New York that day was total chaos for the first few hours. Aaron and I immediately put on our I, I remember pardon me, but I didn't even put on a bra. I just threw on clothes and ran down there and I remember seeing all of these lines at the payphones, which is seems so odd now. And I had my cell phone, and I have a, a very distinct memory of a woman walking. Uh, we were on West End, had walked up, and she had soot all over her, and she looked a little dazed and confused. And I just happened to be standing right there, and I said, "Are you okay?" And she said, "I was down there looking for my child because." they went to preschool right across the street and I need to get down there again because they wouldn't let me through and I and she said and I've lost my purse in the chaos I just left it somewhere you could see complete and utter shock and panic and Aaron and I both just went we I dove in the middle of West End and there was a cab coming down with maybe five four or five people in it I said you have to let this lady in she needs to find her child New Yorkers scooted over I don't think we all, much of us cared about the rules of how many should be in a cab. People scooted over. I handed her, I think whatever I had was 40 bucks and sent her on her way. And at that point my phone rang and nobody's phone was ringing. And it was my mom. And she said, do you know what's going on? Because remember I had just thrown on my clothes and I said, there's been a bombing or a plane and she told me. And then she told me other planes were missing because at this point they were. And I said, Mom, what's happening? We're very uh, God people. And she, I said, is this, the, is this the end of the world? I mean, I didn't know. And she said, I don't know, but I want you and Aaron to be together today. And I want you to go get cash. And I want you to get food. And I want you to be together. So we did that. We went to the bank. We stood in line for ATM. And everybody was dead silent. And a man had a transistor radio. And I was listening to every single thing that was being said. And suddenly, the thought of my sitcom not being picked up anymore, it went away. It didn't matter. I was sad, but it was like instant prioritizing happened for me. One of the things that I found interesting, uh, I don't know that many people talk about this, but on Broadway there was a discussion of, should we continue the shows this week? And my feeling was very strong that we should. That life should continue because it sends a message to terrorists and the people that had done this to us that we will continue, we will move on. And also, uh, there was uh, the other side of the coin, people were saying, but so much has happened and we're just entertainers. And, and I said, and the people that went down with the Titanic that played till the very last minute we're the musicians. I'm not saying we're going down. I'm saying let's, we aren't doing brain surgery. Absolutely true. But let's do the shows. Let's continue to, I wasn't even in a show at the time, but I thought people get back to Broadway now. And Jerry Zachs, a very famous uh, film uh, Broadway director, walked down the street the, the day it happened. Aaron and I went to church just to be in a place of the Lord and he's Jewish and he walked by and he said what are you what are you doing and it was one of those moments I said I don't know we're going in this church and he said I, I think I'm going to come in there with you and he put out a cigar and walked in with us and we were all just together nobody said anything but Broadway went went up that night I was never prouder to be mem a member of, of a community 
And then, of course, I believe I did a benefit at Lincoln Center and many to come after that for our fallen heroes and Americans. We had a pretty big, famous Broadway leading lady at the time, um, LaShawns, who lost her husband, and she was pregnant. And I remember thinking of her, and I just loved how we came together. And I loved how New York came together. And it just showed to me how great humanity is in such an off the face of evil, how great humanity is. A lot of people going back to their Broadway show struggled because they didn't feel like being funny and happy and doing a play. They wanted to, they, people were still in mourning. But as I talked to a lot of my friends who were doing you know, their performances, I said, it's almost like, you know how the military goes to war. That's why there's a USO. That's why we're performers and we go and perform. That it's almost our duty to take people out of this horrendous reality. And I felt like a lot of our Broadway performers did view it as their purpose, especially during that time. Again, we're not doing solving cancer, but we are taking people out of the moment of this horrendous act and maybe making them forget for a second of what's happened. 9-11 has always been so hard for me because I was there in the thick of it. And I, I think that people were there that were there in the thick of it, we all look at each other with a knowing look. A few years ago, I was doing a, a spiritual album for Sony Classical and Diane Warren sent me a song called Borrowed Angels. And I immediately went, this song is all about, this song is 9-11. And for many years I've wanted to sing it on that day for anybody that would listen. Last year the mayor asked me to sing at Ground Zero and the lyrics um, are very powerful. The song is about people walking amongst us who are angels on earth, but sometimes heaven needs them back again because he needs them up there. And they might be gone too soon in our, for, to us, but, but their time on earth was spent and spent well. And the mayor, Mayor Bloomberg, looked at me after it was over and he said, that, that has to be, that has to be the song. Nine, that is 9-11. And um, just recently I did my fourth album, which is a country record, but I redid the song again in, much, in a much simpler way, that I, the way that I performed it last year as I looked into the eyes of the families. You have to understand I was on a stage looking down at family members who are holding up the pictures of their loved ones and I'm singing into their eyes about borrowed angels. They shine a little brighter, they feel a little more, they love the most. They're gone but they're still with us and he heaven needs them back again. And I saw so many families looking up at me with tears streaming down their face but with smiles. And probably the hardest performance, one of the hardest performances I've ever done. I, I think my larynx went into my brain, I'm pretty sure it did. And um, now when I sing that song, I think of that date and that part of our history and the loss of our barred angels. And so it felt, it would feel remiss to not have sung it with just a guitar, just simply in that way the way I did it for the families that day.